All right, so let's actually start building this into an actual game. So right now we just kind of have this one static object that's kind of in here. Its uh, size, I believe, is what, 64 by 64? So what we're going to do is we're going to actually make a snap by grid happen over here. We're going to actually want to view it. So let's go view, show grid. And then we're going to configure to snap. And instead of doing 10 by 10, we're going to actually make it 32 by 32 then. Is that about the right size? No, it's not quite. Did I shrink this thing or something? Where's the scale? Did I shrink the sprite or something? Yeah, I did. Okay, so that explains a lot. So let's make this thing the actual size of, there we go. We snapped it to the grid size. That looks about right. And let's snap the collision size to be on there as well. We could simply scale it on up by using our scale tool like this kind of go indefinitely large on this thing. So, and we'll just scale this to like a thousand. Boom. That's way too big. Okay, let's go back down on there. Instead of doing a thousand, let's say something along the lines of, I don't know, let's say a hundred then. That should be about big enough, I think. Yeah, that looks about right. Let's modulate it to be black. Good enough for what we're trying to do here. And then let's duplicate it. Let's move this next one over like so. So we'll make it the position about 2000. And what's this one's Y position? We'll make it the same. And it's 16. So we'll make this one 16 as well. And now both of them are at the same Y. And they're 2000 units apart in terms of the X. We'll duplicate it again. So we'll drop down the scale on the Y down to 1. And we'll make the scale on the X equivalent to about 100 and see what happens. Then let's just kind of move it over like so. We just need to scale it down a bit. 63 it is. Not trying to get perfection here or anything, but just kind of want to close in space here. All right, not trying to make anything professional looking or anything like that. Yeah, that's probably good enough. So we'll leave it as is for now because I just want to have like a board and some boundaries inside the game because those boundaries are going to determine exactly where things will spawn. And I'll show you what I mean. Where we're going with this is that we're going to have some waves of enemies spawn at an increasingly fast interval. Right? Right now, the position that they can be in is anywhere from 992, or wait, negative 1600 on the Y. So I'm going to actually make it like closer to negative 1550 so they don't hit that. You know what? So negative 1500 would probably be best. So they'll, they'll spawn far enough away from that wall. Um, and then for the bottom Y, it's going to be based on this one's location. And that one's 1630. So we'll make it 15... 50 on the positive side of Y. So somewhere between negative 1500 and 1550 will be that random range. And then we're going to have a random range between this X right here, 16 on the X. And on the bigger side of the X is going to be 2000. So anywhere between 16 and 2000 and negative 1500 and positive 1550 on the Y, we're going to be able to spawn enemies. And... I've actually gone over everything that we need in order to make that happen inside of the script now. So let's see if you guys can go ahead and make it yourselves. Go ahead and see if you can actually make a script that spawns enemies for you. Go ahead and see if you can do that now. It's a difficult one, right? All right. So we're actually going to add the script to something itself because there's no real reason to make a different node for it and we don't really need something to do anything else, right? So we're going to add the script to something, spawn enemies.gd. And then let's delete all this and let's get to work on it. So we're going to make a bar enemy equals preload and then we're going to want to make this enemy in here. So we're going to do res like that and we're going to do it in scenes and it's going to be the enemy.tscn and just like the bullet we're going to actually want to load him in at a certain time and the thing is we're going to actually want to do it based on a timer so let's go back out of this maximize screen mode let's go back into 2d here and we're going to actually load in a new child node a timer into this and this timer we're going to want to name it something that makes sense for this type of a timer and let's call it something like respawn timer right 
Now the respawn timer is going to actually send out a signal, timeout, and on respawn timer timeout in something, we're going to want that function to go off inside of here. And also, we're going to want to go back into the respawn timer. We're going to want to make sure that the timer is auto started so that it's actually running. And they'll start off at one second, which is pretty fast, but it should do. And so basically now we just want to go back into the script and based on how fast this timer is going off, we want it to spawn enemies at that speed. So let's go ahead and use this on respawn timer timeout. And we're going to actually create a few variables here to pass in all the stuff. So we're going to make a var y location is equivalent to random range. And it's from negative 1500 to 1550. And var x location is equivalent to random range. And this one's going to be equivalent to 16 to 2000. And then we're going to create an enemy here. So we're going to write var e equals enemy dot instance. And then we're going to simply set add child because you got to remember we're in something, which is the parent that we normally get when we're making an instance. And we're going to add e to us. Then we're going to set e dot position equivalent to vector two. And this one's going to have the x location and the y location. And everything else I think should be all set up. The only thing is we want to actually make respawn timer dot wait time equals the max between 0 0.01 will be the fastest that it can possibly go off. And it's going to be respawn timer dot wait time minus 0.1, which will be a much faster speed up time for it. So every second at first it will be going off and it will go off every 0.9 seconds and 0.8 seconds and then so on and so forth. You know, let's make this 0 0.05. I think that's a better number to start off with. Let's go ahead and push the play button and see what happens with this. We should have some enemies start to kind of show up. There's one right there. Oh, another one. That one appeared right next to him. And another one. Okay, they're starting to come in pretty fast now. So 0 0.05 might be even too quick. Okay, another thing that we're going to want to do here is to make it so that the seed is actually random, so the locations are actually random. Let's actually go on function ready and we're going to run the thing called randomize. This will actually make it so that the seed that they use to randomize numbers will actually be randomized based on the time at the time that it happens. It will make it so that you get a different interaction every time that we play. And this was happening way too fast. So we're going to make this minus 0 0.01 because that was happening really quick there right off the bat. Okay, hold on. I want to get rid of these initial enemies because they're just annoying and make it so that I can't test anything. Let's delete those. Alright, so if I start driving around now, eventually things should start to attack us. There's one right there. Alright, a little bit better. Not bad. Let's uh, go to the player and check out this camera 2D and let's actually zoom out a bit more. Let's actually set it to 1 now. So that we have a bit of a bigger screen going for us. Is it much bigger? ship should be smaller and just maximize the screen on here. So now we have this enemy spawning system that is working out. We've got it so that it happens pretty often. Uh, now we just, we've gone most of the way through making this game now. It's uh, starting to function correctly here. We've actually got a little bit of a game. Uh, the only thing that we need to do is kind of make some sort of an end goal next. And then we're going to be able to, well, then it's just about making like, you know, explosions and sound effects and stuff. And then we're done. So we'll get to that in the next video, guys. I hope that you liked the video. Please like, subscribe, leave a comment. You guys know the drill. Have a great day, guys. Bye.